definitely got to buy the monkey. Oh yeah. But I think out of all that's here, I mean, there's a lot here that I want, but I think what makes most sense for us and what I like for the money All right, guys, we're on our way to Blairs, Virginia to do an update on one of the rarest Volkswagens we've ever found and ever sold. It's done, completed, and we're gonna go for a drive. We're also gonna buy back one of the absolute rarest Jeep CJs I've ever owned and sold. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. So we landed last night at Greensboro, North Carolina. Five flight delays for American. Not a dig at American, this is what happened. It was insanely late when we got to the hotel, like one-ish in the morning. And we're driving to Blairs, Virginia, because uh, Greensboro is the closest major airport. <clears throat> and we were revisiting an old friend from Coffee Walk 150, a 59 Volkswagen panel van there was a one family owned panel van in Dallas. Really significant piece of history for Volkswagen. He has done all the mechanicals on it. It's now running to drive and we're gonna get to see it and drive it. But more importantly, he found one of the rarest CJs that Collinsworth has ever owned, serviced and sold. We sold it about 10 years ago. He calls me up and he goes, Dennis, listen to this CJ that's in town. I'm like, I looked back at the records like, how in the world did that get there? In a roundabout way, it passed through several family members and ended up in an estate sale. And I asked Grayson just go over there and get it bought, and he did. So we're going to go revisit one of our old friends from Coffee Walk 150 and rescue one of the rare CJs we've ever owned and get it back to Wiley. Sir, how are you? Hey! Are. <laughs> I didn't even see you pull in. <laughs> We're lost. <laughs> we all made it. We found you. Turn around and follow me. I love the no dirt bike sign, but you're on a dirt bike. <laughs> That's for them people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This might be one of the best kept secrets in the Volkswagen world. Tons of cool stuff around here. Wow. Well, how are you, sir? Man. Good to see you again. Good to be seen. Where'd you all fly from? Yeah. Uh, we flew to Greensboro. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the closest one for sure. This is my brother Cameron, who actually. Hi, how are you? Like the biggest Jeep guy in the world, so. <laughs> Love some coffee walk. He's uh, actually who, who the buying the Jeep from. Okay. Well, let's check it out. The California plates are still on it. Oh, I haven't touched it. Cool. I have not touched it. Wow, you guys got some serious stuff in here. I wasn't expecting all this. Yeah. I think I brought my checkbook. <laughs> There's a few you can take with you. So how did you end up with this, sir? A buddy of mine was at a sale and saw it and shot me a text and I said, man, I gotta have it. And um, so I, I didn't, I didn't even seen it. And I saw the letter CE on the back of it. And I thought, man, somebody must've put their initials on the back of their Jeep. So at three o'clock in the morning, I set up and I went, California edition, just a whim. So I typed in Golden Eagle California edition and a video pops up with you. Right. And I thought, Aha, and I went back and saw him, saw that you'd had it. So I texted Grayson the next morning and said, see if, you know, needs to be back home, see if Dennis wants it. So oh, I called Grayson it. immediately. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's so easy enough. I bought that from the original owner. Wow. I was wow. extremely excited to get that Jeep back in the day. So obviously I've done CJs my whole life. Yeah. Me too. I've Me too. only seen two CE Jeeps ever. Wow. What else is cool is that's a 77, the first year Golden Eagle. It's the only year they said limited edition as well. Cool. So limited edition CE. I've only seen one other of these ever in my entire life. So I appreciate you guys calling. Yeah. Well, and it's got like the 39,000 you know, miles. And so 
I drive a CJ5 every day. I've got an 80, so sort of an anomaly. It's a renegade, totally optioned out, except it's got a four cylinder. But I love it. I'm a pastor, and I, everywhere I go in town, everybody knows my Jeep. You know? And so I put like maybe a mile and a half on the thing because I didn't want it, you know, have any more miles on it. But four cylinder to that, like a totally different world. But well, the cool G thing about an 80 and the four cylinder is yep. that, that that's one year only interior. Yep. It's a one year only stripe kit. I know. But that's a GM bell housing. Yeah, well, and, and so I mean, you can put a you can put a three fifty in it, yeah. it just yeah. bolts straight in it. Yeah, well, it's got power steering, tilt, you know, the Renegade package, everything's original paint. What it, color is it? It's white with blues. You've got one that's the exact opposite. So I kind of want it, but saving up. Um, yours is blue with the blue stripes. Mine's white with with the blue stripes. Yeah, that eighty cool. is blue tier today, and ours is same, original paint as well. Yeah, same yeah. strips. It's yeah. got the original seats, original top, yeah. all that. I just need a new blue top. I'm, so in this, the top on this Jeep. When I got it, the guy, it, the Jeep didn't have a top. Right. So that's one of our heritage tops that we had best top make for us. Hey, pop. Hey, hey. So the date goes 2014 on the top, which is, I, I think, which is when we had this Jeep. So I had this Jeep nine years ago. I was thinking it was 10. Right. This, this is also one of the best original paint yeah. Golden Eagles that we've ever had. <laughs> and there's our key tag from Collins Brothers. It's still on there. It's got less than 20 miles more than you had. Really? Yeah. So. Well, I don't even need to look at it. I'm just going to pay you what you want for it. <laughs> which is a lot more than I sold it for nine years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Time wow. change. So this CE is what we were just talking about. It's California edition. Again, 77 is the first year for Golden Eagle. And it's the only year where it said limited edition. Um, I should have brought a Holy Grail cup, Zach. <laughs> Golly, such a stud Jeep. The only issue with this Jeep is the guy serviced it before I got it, did all the all the gaskets, and had the motor painted and painted the wrong color. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought of that. But the, the, the motor is the wrong color, but that's how it was when I got it and left it. Um, it's the best one I've got. I'm, I'm going to tear that all the way down because it's oh, going to really? drive me crazy and obey the right color. Other than that, and this right here, he had a lock on it hmm. back in the day, so now we could get in it. I don't know why, but. Bad day. What a cool Jeep. Wow. Well, it's my favorite, CJ. Well, guys, thank you guys for doing that. Call me on it. Well, like I said, just a brainstorm. Literally, 3 o'clock in the morning, California edition, and this that, that led me to that video. Well, I would never know. But it was yours. There was nothing. It's crazy, crazy rare. We got a uh, we got an '85 in this week. That's a Western Special that nobody in the Jeep community has ever heard of. So I posted, it and they're like, "What are you talking about, Dennis?" I'm like, "Here's the window sticker. Pump yeah. your brakes. <laughs> Western Special." So there were some odd stuff. But, I mean, California was hardcore emissions. And also, oh, yeah. this is only the second Jeep I've ever seen. In California, you're required to have that right. sticker. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when it went in for inspection, that it was a California vehicle. I mean, 68 was the first year that everything in California required emissions. Mm. Everything. Uh, I don't know. I think California's crazy when it comes to all oh, the stuff. I know. <laughs> and yeah, consider there's so many old cars out there. Yeah, the, the smog amazing. equipment on this is actually a little bit different than the smog yeah. equipment on the rest of them. Mm. And it's all on this Jeep, which is cool. Mm. Well, where's the 59? Right behind the big man. <laughs> Check this. How'd I miss that? Wow. I bet he might get all the metal fab. I'm gonna scoot it out just a little bit so you can see it. That is so cool. I tell you what. So this is a one family owned Volkswagen. I don't know if oh, yeah. Grace had told you the whole story, but Yeah, because I watched the episode and texted oh, him yeah. and said you need to get up with Dennis, so I get I sent him your contact information. And that's how he found that. Yeah, yeah I saw it at like 7.30 on a Friday evening. And I was at dinner with some people. And I got up and left. And I said, well, I hate to call him. I, I never talked to you before then. I said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a wild shot and call him at 7.30 on Friday night and hope that he answers. And you answered. And I said, well, <laughs> we're going to figure it out. Just go ahead and mark me sold on it. And we'll figure out the details. And, and it worked out. And I'm glad you I'm, I still appreciate it. worked out great. Awesome story. The story was amazing. I mean, yeah. This guy was a handyman in Highland Park, which is the most expensive homes in Dallas, period. Like, so he was the fix-it guy for all the multi-million dollar houses. Uh, 
<laughs> man, I, I, it took me two years to get that bought. Well, that's, that's, that was, was a good episode, and I, I knew because when I, I'm 13 years older than Grayson, so I, my first vehicle, I had a little bug, and then I bought a, a, a I guess it was a 15 window van, and there's pictures of him helping me work on it, so he kind of got in his blood at a young age. So that's that. that is so cool. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one that actually worked. <laughs> ever. That is so cool. Yeah, so again, guys, you gotta, you gotta go back and watch episode 150 to see how they've revived this. It looks amazing. Throw the back. It needed a lot. <laughs> Throw the thing back. It's crazy. Think about it. It had the original keys too, didn't it? It did, but it was broke off in the okay. ignition. So we actually had the key, got a new ignition, had all the doors matched to where one key fits on. We replaced all the, all the interior panels with the correct stuff, the correct cab diviner, all that stuff. I mean, everything works on it. Um, it's got, in. people say Volkswagen don't have heat. This thing will run you out of here. I promise <laughs> you. So my opinion on something like this, this is, to me, is worth more than a restored one. To it, me, is so, that correct in the Volkswagen world? Absolutely. Okay. We I mean, we ended up replacing all the floors and everything from here down. We made from scratch because we didn't want to mess with the we didn't want to affect the paint on the outer right. on the lip. So we all, you know, from the outside you can't tell it's hardly had any metal work, but we did do quite a bit. But it still is, for the most part, is a it's survivor. A, it's a survivor. It is. Incredible. It's so great when we rescue something and it comes to a place like this that has got the love it needed. Now, I mean, this thing's going to live forever. I mean, it's got to be one of the coolest 59s out there. Has to be. You, you even left some of the shelving in there. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, we left all that. You know, we cleaned the heck out of it, but... That is really the cab cool. light works, all that kind of stuff. Wow. Dude, that is freaking killer. Wow. We put a, I still got the original motor and all that stuff, which I know it'll run fine, but we put a 1641 with dual carbs, so. So the motor that was in it was correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the original motor. It, doesn't, it didn't have, but it was like, um, it was in kilometers, but it came out to like 22,000 actual miles, and that was definitely actual miles on this thing. Yeah, he was he was just, he only used it in that neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Like that one or two mile radius. Because the underneath of it was so incredibly solid. But, I you mean. You know, what's crazy is, it, I mean, this thing never left Dallas, and it still has some rust. I know, These I know. These are so rust -proof. it's just crazy. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I was surprised. You know, the the corner over there, it was gone, but we replaced, you know, just That's why so, so few of these have survived because they're just so rust prone. Yeah. Well, I had no idea you guys had all this stuff in here. Check <laughs> anything out you want. Who's, the, the, Mustang? Mustang? Who's the Mustang guy? I'm the Mustang. Me and my you dad, yeah. So this is 64 and a half? 64 and a half. Still got the generator and all that. Six cylinder 64 and a half. Six cylinder, three speed. I never thought much about little six cylinder cars, but the first time I drove this one, I think I changed my mind. It's a blast to drive. Uh, well, I saw the 260 badges. That's how I knew it was a 64 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, they, somebody in the past has added those. So the, the 600 real part, light, this, real, real lightly shut it. There you go. The 600 cars were Tico cars, but the 64 and a half 600 cars were Yuko cars. Yuko, that's right. This is crazy rare. All right, Mustang guys, to see a Yuko 64 and a half six cylinder is really, really rare. So I want you to see that and the door warranty tag because normally when you walk up, it's a T code. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. Well, I like that. It's not a bad little trunk. Let's check out your fastbacks. Are any of the fastbacks for sale? One of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, for some stupid reason, the nicest one. That, that this one, this was for let, sale? I would let that one go. Okay. 
It's got air conditioning. It's a 67 C code. Great driving car. <laughs> I love the 6x9s in the back. Oh, yeah. We all have that in high school. Oh, yeah. We might be here for a while, Zach. I didn't know you had all this stuff in here, Grayson. <laughs> you just accumulated over time. I'm always looking for cars, and people think I'm just, you know, looking for stuff to turn around or whatever, but... Well, I thought you were just mainly a Volkswagen guy. Oh, I'm Volkswagens, Fastbacks, and Jeep Scramblers have always been my thing, for sure. I've got a lot of Scramblers right now. You can never have too many scrammers when no, you have no. a ton of them. Well, this car didn't hurt my feelings at all. I like it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good old car. This is my dad. This is my dad, Jesse. He's How are you, sir? He'll be 83 in um, August, and this is his daily driver. He drives it to Myrtle Beach, the car shows, you know, four or five hours away. There was one day last summer, they drove, it was 102 degrees, no air conditioning. Him and my mom took off four hours to a car show. That's awesome. I, said, I followed behind him in a car with air conditioning. Is it a factory black car? Factory black. It's, it's been repainted one time in 1989. Black's pretty rare. Black with a red interior. I, I love the colors and all on it. So that's a keeper, and then that's my personal one. Okay. That we're still building. It's a, a big block four speed car. With, it's an odd car because the color combination you don't ever see, but it's got deluxe interior, big block S code, four speed, non GT, and non fold down rear seat. It's a really weird option car. I mean, usually just the base models, you know, don't, don't have the fold down. That is very unusual. You know, but it is an S code car. It's an S code car. And this car, the top side, you know, looks like it does. The underside, red oxide primer, like, I mean, unbelievable underneath. And where it counts, this car is nice. You have the dry tray for it? Yep, it just got, fit, um, the original 390 now, it's, I'm at my buddy's shop now waiting. As a matter of fact, I'm taking it to him next week to, we've already done the brakes and everything else on it, so. Wow. But I'm gonna leave it like this on the outside and just, you know, have a driver. some great stuff. Now these, this line of cars, they belong to my buddy, um, Alan. This is a 73 Trans Am, which is, that's my favorite year of the Trans Am because it's the last of this body style, but the first with the bird. So that just always kind of was the best of both worlds. And that car is up. Tell me what's unusual about this car. It's a very unusual thing about this shift. I already saw it. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy rare. Zach, you gotta get this. I have only seen maybe two column shift cars. Yeah, it's very unusual. That is crazy. Rear console is pretty rare too, but column shift is one of the rarest options you can get. Oh yeah. Would he sell that car? I don't know, Alan. Would you sell it? Yeah. We'd think about anything. That would be the one. If he was going to sell one, I think he would. So we're leaving from here to go pick up a car. Wow. Which is pretty cool. I've just uh, had that one about six months. You know, I'd always wanted one and uh, that was the first one I found that clicked all the boxes, you know. I think these are crazy underrated and crazy undervalued. I'm glad you said yeah, that because I felt like I overpaid the whole way home. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you overpay for one that's that nice. Yeah, oh, that's a nice car. That's a good driving car too. It's pretty stock, other than headers, and uh, it really, you know, you can sit for six weeks and come in and crank it up and drive a four-speed car too. Wow. Oh yeah. So there's two or three guys that are really very, very private on these cars. They have everything NOS. Wow. Oh, I wow. mean, everything, and I've personally seen it. But to get a car in that condition is tough. Yeah. Find a. I don't know what you paid for it. I'm not even going to ask. But whoever restored that car spent a lot of money on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's stuff. He had it for you know, many years. So uh, that's the kind of guy you want to buy one from. Those are his two most special ones. That's a 70 Trans Am and a 70 Cuda. He actually, in the late 70s, early 80s, he had that Cuda and a white and blue 70 Trans Am. 
rent came due, times got tight, the Trans Am left, but he kept the Cuda since back then, which I've been trying to buy it from what he, for what he paid for back then. For <laughs> $2,200. Uh oh. Golly. But a couple of years ago, he said, I'm going to buy the Trans Am back, but I want it in Lucerne Blue. So You got good taste, sir. Thank you. I mean, this is one of the best driving cars. Oh, those are. Those oh, yeah. That's a great you know, car. that is my favorite car over here, but I wish it drove like this one. My Mopar buddies hate it when I say that, but it's absolutely true. The only those day he didn't like it was I used to have a 68 Shelby GT500, and we raced them on VIR a couple years ago, and he didn't like being behind. This car has got how many miles on it? Something like 330,000. 330, miles. It was, his, it was his only car for years. And a tough wheel. Yeah. That's fantastic. Is it, is it a real shaker car? No. no. I always wanted a shaker, so I'm, it's been a shaker since 1987. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I bought it in 82, I think. But it was, you know, factory small block car and all that. But you build it like one? So it was a 318 car? Well, just even finding a Cuda convertible was tough. Oh yeah, well they're about 1,200 of them or something. Tough, tough. Wow. I did not expect to see all this. Yeah, we got, we got a good variety. We like a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Viper too. Yeah, we've done, really we've done pretty well with these. How many miles are on the Viper? Uh, 33. You drive your stuff. Good for you. Oh yeah. Yeah, we try not to let any grass grow underneath them. That's well, what's for sure. sale? What's not? I can't speak for him, but on my end, the fastback, the red fastback, the red convertible, and I'm considering selling a 21 window too. I've got a 21 window VW bus back there. I don't know if you saw that, but that's kind of the I'm holy grailish of the Volkswagen world. I'm pretty sure you know what that's worth. Well, <laughs> you never know though. I like easy deals. How about the Scrambler? No, I've had a bunch of scramblers. I, that was original paint. I landed on it three or four years ago when they were still dirt cheap, and I said, I, I'm gonna keep that one. I drive it every day. I mean, you can open it and you can tell it's dirty. It does V8 in it? Yep, it's got a 350 and automatic in it. But the body on I mean, underneath, the underneath of it looks as good as the top side. Love original paint stuff. I tell you what, I'm just tickled pink to get this. Golden Eagle back. Thank oh, you yeah. for doing that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a ton for doing that. Yeah, I'm glad it's worked out. Really, sure. really appreciate that. I've enjoyed just staring at it for the last couple of months. Well, let's see your 21 window. Nice check out. I don't know how you could possibly buy a 21 window from a Volkswagen guy to make any money, but. Original paint. Oh, yeah. Now, that can be yours, too. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> <laughs> original paint. For what it is, it's extremely solid bus. It's still got the original headliner in it, which is unheard of because all these always leaked and then they'd be water stained and all that. So that's how you know it's got a solid roof. But it's a 67, which is the last year of a split. That's kind of the, the best one they ever made. It's a walk through. It's a good bus, but I'm kind of got a lot of projects going on. And I wouldn't mind. Well, how much is that for an easy deal? For an easy deal, um, basically, to be honest with you, it's, it comes with, it's got... Does it run and drive? It, the original motor is with it, and it okay. did run. I pulled the motor out, and um, 63 and older sunroof deluxe buses are 23 windows. Okay. 64, they changed the body style and had this wide hatch instead of that small hatch, and they become a 21 window because they don't have the corner window. But as far as drivability, the 67 is the best. That's the best. Four okay. hands down. That that and this, those are the two best buses for driving experiences you can have. This, it comes with, to my knowledge, everything needed parts-wise. All the brake stuff, all the, everything. Even the upholstery and stuff. That's fantastic. I'll consider that. But that's a nice bike. It, I haven't cranked it in several months. I know it needed some tuning up and all that, but it's all original nice bike. You see some guts. It's, it's crazy good. expensive. The tank's perfect inside. It's got all the hard to find parts on it. Well, he knows what his stuff's worth. <laughs> <laughs>
That is for sure. <laughs> uh, how about stuff outside? Can we look at that? Yeah, yeah. That, and we got a whole bunch of stuff. There's more stuff out back. It don't stop for a while. I don't see it all if you got time. Yeah, yeah, we got this. I don't know if you're in the camera or not. This, both of these are sixty sevens. Okay. This is a Cerro Scotty, and I believe that for one of these, this is probably the nicest original one that exists. Wow. In my opinion. Look at the inside. I mean, it is, and it's all original. Original everything. So, do we need this with our motorhome collection that we have in Nevada? Yeah. <laughs> it's yes. Actually, yes. People love these How things. How cool is that? Oh, this the is wall. You know, these usually leaked and this they is rotted. Art deco, crazy cool. Yeah, I love it. It'd be the ultimate to pull behind a uh, Volkswagen, huh? Oh yeah, for sure. So, how much does it weigh? It looks light. It's like 1,200 pounds or something? About 1,300 pounds. About 1,300 pounds. Not, yeah, you can pull with anything. Look at the design cues on this. Crazy cool. Even the hubcaps are special. Yeah, yeah, and those are like hen's teeth to find. Wow. But it's a neat little piece. You've got some cool stuff. No, it's an Age of 67 Aerosene Globetrotter. It's not bad, but it's not, you know, it's not. It's an absolute cult following on these. Oh, yeah. It's solid. It's it's got good bones and all that, and it's original. You know, it's still got all the original. Look stuff at the record player. <laughs> what year oh, is this? Works. 67. And the record player works. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, our, our our hangout spot in the evenings. <laughs> wow. Hey Zach, you got to get this. This is crazy cool. I don't even think we've never even filmed an Airstream, have we? Yeah. <laughs> it's an Airstream Globetrotter. It's 20 foot. You know, they made band, they made a ton of different models. I was actually at an auction in Lynchburg a couple weeks ago, and there was one I had my eyes set on. I talked to my buddy Mike Wolf, and he said, "Oh, you'll be able to get it 30 grand or less." And I was there, and I was bidding, and the thing sold for 190 thousand dollars. What do you know about? I thought you were supposed to know about Airstreams. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so some of these things are crazy. So the, so the Globetrotter is. Basically, the short version of an Airstream. It is. It's not the shortest, but it is one of the shorter ones. It's still single axle. It's the yeah. shortest one I've ever seen. Yeah. The shortest ones I think are like 16 foot, 15. And what, and what is this one? 20. That is really nice. Some of the ones that are even shorter, though, I mean, you, you can't hardly use them. So, what do the Airstream guys think about polishing these? Um, they're usually all about them. I mean, it's you know, it's a lot of work to get it there, but it's they crazy. are breathtaking when they're done. Yeah, you know, the the twin orbitals that they polish airplanes yeah. with. Oh yeah, exactly. But yeah, the polishes would take a oh, it takes a while. A week or two yeah. weeks. Then you got to stay on top of it. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. So I guess you just leave it like that. Yeah, that's why I kind of my cars. I like them just original and stuff. These hinges are just crazy cool. You got something super nice. So you, you would sell cool. that? He didn't say no. I had to think on that one. Okay. I had to check with my better half. That is cool. I'm so excited to get this back. I think I'm going to kiss it. Oh, man. Gross. That's a killer Jeep. Oh, you want for that, sir? Yeah. I don't know what all the era cars and all you like. But oh, I love everything. That's a thing. Volkswagen thing with some fuchs on it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that belongs to a buddy of ours. All these are either mine or one of my friends. It's not like we got, you know, is a big, of big Has it got a big motor in it too? Yeah, it's got a big motor. A 2110 or something. <laughs> wow. Oh, it flies. That's awesome. I love it. I love the five lug conversion too. Oh, yeah. That's, a lot. That's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Disc brakes and all that. That's that. super cool. This is a 58 walkthrough panel bus, which is pretty unusual to come across for an early one. It's got the walkthrough instead of the bench seat across of it. So the 59 that I sold you is, is there anything out there that's, is that like the lowest option thing you can get? Yes, it, it is. It definitely is. Which um, is cool, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, that 59, it's the first year of the later model bumpers and a lot of things are different. This is 58 or older, it's called a press bumper bus. It has these style bumpers. Okay. That's the first sign. I mean, that's, if you ever see one that's got the press bumpers on it, that's a rare bus. You don't come across those often. To me, whether it's a, a Porsche or a muscle car or whatever, like we recently uh, looked at an LS6 Chevelle, which 
we're going to eventually get bought. Mm -hmm. But it was a no option car. Yeah. Oh, that's so you call some guys and like, oh man, that's going to be tough to sell. I'm like, mm, I disagree. Yeah. It is a zero option car. Yeah. So I, I had a, I had the, I had a zero option seventy Hemi Cuda. Mm -hmm. Zero bench seat, wow. column shift, no option. Yeah. And it was the only one known to exist. And people were like, you're never going to sell that. I'm like, yeah. mm, I disagree. I mean, to me, I either like heavily optioned or nothing. Or nothing. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. That's 59 El Camino, original paint, of course. Is this for sale? I, that belongs to my girlfriend's uncle. And um, I tell you, you hang around with some cool car people. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're all family or friends. I mean, 59 El Camino is a holy grail, incredibly sought after oh, yeah. truck. It, it, a cult following in itself. Oh, I know. And but the problem is they're insanely expensive to restore. Oh, they are. I found this one for them in, in New Mexico several years ago. And most of these cars are eight out, but it was a, you know, yeah, they, they ain't perfect, very, but it's a pretty rustic. solid car. But yeah, I, I wouldn't restore that. Oh, no. He's going like to do it. the interior. He's already got an LS and all that stuff for it. So he's going to put on air ride and roll it like it is. Rarely do you see one of these. Wow. That is so cool. Man, you got some killer stuff. I gotta scratch my head and think about what I can buy. It actually, um, it belongs to a good friend of ours, Daniel Suarez, he's a, a NASCAR driver, and this car belongs to his girlfriend. She she looked for like two years to find an Irish green, green 66 with that color interior and all that, so I can guarantee you they won't sell that one. <laughs> But it's a nice car. I love the 912s. I think they're way undervalued. So it's a, this is a three gauge car. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's a wow. cool car. The motor's off right now being rebuilt. Well, if that is ever for sale, let me know. Oh, we. What are we going to buy, Zach? Oh, well. <laughs> I know what he wants to buy. Can't stay away from it. It's looking great. So we've got a. Where'd you go, Grayson? We've got an auction coming up. Mm -hmm. It's a restoration revival. Is what we're calling it. We yeah. have 210 cars. Okay. Trans Ams, GTOs, Camaros, Mustangs, Corvettes. Uh, basically, just really good stuff to restore. Mm -hmm. Where I'm going with this is I've got Sean and James and Alex are. All over the all place the picking place. up stuff. Yeah. So normally we roll up and whatever we're buying, yeah. which the Jeep, we take with us. Yeah. Um, they're all running behind. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay, so uh, who's coming this way? We got James. Yeah. <laughs> James is coming to pick this up. Okay. Probably be late this evening. All right, that's fine. And then he's heading to meet us in uh, Marble, North Carolina to pick up the. Okay, cool. So, cool uh, deal. Well, y'all guys really ought to take a ride in the panel. Take a ride in the old panel bus. See what oh, you so think of it. take it to lunch. You we sure can. For breakfast. Absolutely. I'm buying. Whatever you want. Now, driving through this area, I was like, it doesn't look like there's any restaurants out here. Well, you came in by the highway. There's a whole city, not five miles. Where are we going to eat? Well, you want something nice? You want something? Well, I'm going to tell you two places. There's a place called Cotton, which is downtown the riverfront, and it's really nice. Or there's a place called Mama Possums. And it is great, and it's just a little local hometown spot, but it's good, and it's the closest. It's probably With out of doubt, Mama Possums. <laughs> All right. Let's go grenade Let's this. Do it. Let's take a bunch of old cars. How about Let, that? I agree. Let's take everybody, All right. and I'm buying. All right. <laughs> I definitely want to ride that. You you drive it. I want to drive. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> no. You can ride with them if you want, and you just follow us. Let's go, Zach. How cool is that? This might be one of our best updates ever, and this is why we love rescuing stuff and get them in the right hands. So this 59 panel has been revived. Way to go, yeah, Chris. Yeah. It's awesome. It's good to see you, sir. Yeah, you as well. And I am absolutely so excited you guys called me on that. I can't believe we're getting that back. Uh, yeah, Let's go good. eat. We're going to order everything on the menu. So this morning, Zach and I were talking. We thought this was just going to be a quick, easy update and buy, maybe 15 minutes. Y'all are getting it a full hour. We definitely got to buy the monkey. Oh yeah. Now, I think out of all that's here, I mean, there's a lot here that I want, but I think what makes most sense for us and what I like for the money is the six-cylinder Mustang convertible. 
just to, to see something like that that's that honest, clean, and straight, that is a perfect basis for a resto mod. I don't know how we turn that down. So we're gonna go to lunch, butter them up a little bit, and see if we can close those two when we get back. Look at this, we got a Carmen Kia Jeep Scrambler, and I am getting to drive the one family owned 59 panel. This is a great day to be alive. And a two door XJ, look at that. These guys are serious car guys. And this thing runs great. This is a hoot. This is so cool. What an honor to just get to drive this. Somebody got to do it. Might as well be us. And just the name Mama Possums, this restaurant's got to be awesome. <laughs> like driving a panel like this is crazy. It's like being in a cab over a truck. And we're following a Jeep Scrambler. We got an XJ behind us, a Gear behind us. I, I had no idea the cars that they had. What a surprise this day has been for us. It's awesome. Man, this thing runs great. <laughs> It's kind of like a Jeep that you wouldn't understand. If you drive one of these old Volkswagens, there is nothing like it. It's just crazy cool. Man, this guy knows his stuff. This thing drives fantastic. We're running down these curvy country roads for 40 miles an hour. roads in the hills. Fantastic of Virginia. So when Gracie and his team came out to buy this, I can't remember how many years this thing had been sitting, but like 40 years, maybe 50 years, they actually put a drivetrain in this at Collins Brothers. We'll show you some of that footage and drove it from Collins Brothers to Virginia. And then when they got it back here, they continued to go back through and get this completely dialed in. And even the semaphores, which you know some people call trafficators, which is the turn signals work. So they have everything on this functioning as it did when it was new, and kept it kept it totally patina styled. I tell you what, this is the most fun I've had in a while. If you guys ever get the chance to drive an early split window, there is nothing like it. I mean, it is, is an absolute pleasure. Unbelievable. <laughs> BLT. Yep. Chicken. Yep. This Chicken. Is grilled, crispy, bologna. Okay. Barbecue. All right. All right. Hold on. I'll be right back. I got more coming. <laughs> That was dark. It's gonna be enough for everybody. <laughs> everybody gets some no idea. <laughs> My hands are clean, guys. We got a crispy chicken sandwich. So we'll be bashful, we'll dig in. I don't even know what I got. Tater tots. Here's a fish sandwich right here. Corny dog, fish sandwich. <laughs> Cheeseburger. All right. There's a triple burger right here. All right. Pass it around. Right Whoever, who's, who's brave for a bologna? I'll go for a bologna. All right. Fried bologna has got to be the best buy. <laughs> Outstanding. You've got to love that. Cheeseburger. Love me a butter. I'm a mile this morning. You got it, sir. It's kind of falling apart. That's all right. Again, I washed my hands twice, so don't scare anybody. To a fish sandwich. <laughs> the only thing I can imagine it could be any better than that to top that off would be a forty dollar. All right, do your order. <laughs> All right, y'all put in a hot hamburger plate with gravy. Ah, yeah, that's yeah. worth that. Outstanding. That's the ticket. Fish sandwich. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. darn good. Now this is something we don't see in Texas. Hi, we're our famous coleslaw. Oh, I love coleslaw. Grilled chicken plate. Oh, wow. You ready? <laughs> All right, barbecue plate. We're gonna give that to Zach because he's the, okay, one, he's the only one that eats healthy here. Okay. <laughs> give 
What is that? What is that, Grace? Something barbecue. barbecue. Something what? barbecue. Shark barbecue. Oh, yeah. Okay, hang on. I, I gotta have to get a fork. We're going on best spot number three, Zach. You ready? <laughs> Make sure we save room for the possum version. Oh. Triple. <laughs> I love this place. <laughs> Mama possums. <laughs> Really good. French fries with brown gravy. You know you're in the south right. of that. Zach, you can put the camera down, so I'm really fixing to get after it. <laughs> Mama possums! How was that, guys? We all in. Full belly. All in, and it was all good. I highly recommend it if you're in Blairs, Virginia. Thanks. <laughs>